I saw rocks hit in my car, and then I was off in the air. Really, uh, outside of the dark clouds floating around. You were thrown out of the car? No, sir. I stayed with the car. I crawled out of the car. How far was the car thrown? Uh, well, it hit me on 95th Street, and I got out behind the high school, which is a good block away. Bernie Morgenthaler of Suburban Oak Lawn, describing the fury of a tornado that slammed into his car, one of 18 twisters that swept northeastern Illinois last Friday, causing 55 deaths, injuries to 1,500 persons, and more than $50 million in property damage. Friday, April 21st, began quietly enough, although the sky was overcast and the air was sultry and heavy. By mid-afternoon, the southwest sky turned black with a faint greenish hue, a telltale sign that severe weather was moving in. It was shortly before 4 o'clock in Belvedere, Illinois, a community of 11,000 persons, 70 miles northwest of Chicago. Students from the Belvedere Community High School were climbing aboard buses for the trip home. One of the students, 15-year-old Terry Decker, told newsmen later, Someone shouted, There's a tornado coming. Everybody off the bus. I jumped off, and the wind was so strong I was blown into a field. Everything was coming at me, pieces of wood, metal, and other kids. Buses were being blown over, and everybody was screaming. It was over in a few seconds. The sun peeped through the clouds, and on the ground below, a scene of horror and destruction. Terry Decker suffered a broken arm. Others were not so fortunate. Eight children died when six of the school buses, tossed about like matchsticks, were demolished. Terrified students took cover in the school's new library, but many were cut by flying glass as windows shattered from the tornado's force. The survivors, and those suffering only minor injuries, helped free victims trapped in the demolished buses. In all, ten students were killed. Hundreds were injured by the violent storm. Channel 9 cameraman Tom Grimmett, on assignment in nearby Rockford, rushed to Belvedere to film these scenes less than an hour after the tornado touched down. Grimmett followed the storm's path. From the high school, it leveled a series of farm supply stores and ripped off the roof of the Highland Hospital. The path of destruction then led to a residential area, Highland Subdivision, a ten-block community of middle-class homes. The death toll undoubtedly would have soared even higher had it not been for the warning sounded by patrolman Harry Ferris. He spotted the twister five minutes before it struck and sped through the town, giving a warning for his squad car public address system. Ferris was credited with saving hundreds of lives. Still, 21 persons were killed, more than 1,000 were injured, and nearly 200 homes in Belvedere were destroyed. As darkness fell, red lights blinked on emergency vehicles, and sirens wailed throughout Belvedere's southeast side. With the opening of the Chrysler plant in 1963, Belvedere's population began to grow. Officials predicted that the town was now ready to meet all challenges. It was no match for Friday's tornado. Perhaps Hubert Kay best expressed the feelings of those who survived the deadly storm. Standing before the ruins of his home, Kay spoke softly of neighbors who lost members of their family. Then Kay said, It took two and a half years to build this house. The wind tore it apart in less than a minute. But we can build a house again. Rain began falling in the Chicago area by mid-afternoon. At 425, the Weather Bureau issued tornado warnings for all of Cook County. An hour later, the first funnel cloud, moving in a northeasterly direction, touched down at 95th Street and Southwest Highway. It skipped to 91st and Cicero before moving into Evergreen Park. An area, almost two miles square, became a shambles in a matter of minutes. As the tornado's roar died away, rain fell lightly from the troubled sky, and the screams of sirens broke an eerie silence. Hundreds of residents, most of them still bewildered by it all, took to the darkened streets to help search for victims, help clear away rubble, and direct traffic. Rescue units from Chicago, and from as far away as Niles, Skokie, and Northlake, joined in the search. Hospitals in the area were overflowing with dead and injured. At Christ Community Hospital, reporter Don Harris talked with Tom Rappenchuk of Hometown, one of the survivors. I figure something was brewing because of the fact that when I just came up to the light on Southwest Highway to make a right turn to go across the tracks on Duffy Avenue, the lights went out and 
as I turned the corner, I started up the ramp right by the tracks in front of the firehouse, and the that's when everything hit. Transformer from the telephone post uh, went through the front window of the car, and uh, it landed between my legs. I don't know how how it was happening, but I think it was an act of God that actually I'm sitting in this bed telling you this story. Newsman John Hogan also talked with some of the injured. Oh, that was terrible. Like I said, I bent over cleaning the tub. No, I know what it means. It comes so fast. How badly was your home damaged? Well, the whole second floor was damaged. We left second floor. Nothing left to it. How did you get injured? I was leaning over the bathtub, cleaning the tub out, and all of a sudden, just coming over. That's all I can. What happened to it? The storm. The building got knocked down, that's all. I was right in it, under it. <laughs> I had, I looked up and I had to dig myself out. And uh, when I start pushing out, I hollered for him. And I, uh, well, I only got a couple of scratches. And uh, I had, like I say, everything was on top of me. And uh, I dug myself out and I'm looking out in the front. There was no no front there, and I'm looking at the sky, looking, you know, clear, no <laughs> nothing. And then I stood in the rain. Shortly before 10 o'clock, widespread looting was reported in Oak Lawn, and police, assisted by National Guardsmen, moved in to seal off the community. In an effort to halt the looting, Cook County Sheriff Joe Woods issued an order to his men, shoot all looters on sight. This order was issued to professional policemen. They understand what I mean. They, for instance, did not shoot anyone inside a store. Most of the bank presidents stayed in the banks. We knew who they were. We checked out each person carefully. This certainly discouraged the looters. From Oak Lawn, the twister cut a path through the northeastern section of Evergreen Park. Hardest hit was the area near 89th and Kedzie. Witnesses said the twister rushed along at ground level for four minutes, literally tearing apart everything in its path. At California and 88th Street, the twister snapped trees, tore roofs off homes, but only on the south side of the street. Homes on the north side of 88th Street were virtually untouched. Skipping to the Dan Ryan Expressway near 83rd Street, the tornado caused enough damage to hold up rush hour traffic in the southbound lanes. Four trucks on the 83rd Street overpass were demolished. Splintered wood, glass, and other debris was spread across the roadway. Several light poles also were blown down. The backup in the southbound lanes caused traffic to pile up as far north as Division Street on the Kennedy Expressway. A block of homes along the expressway at 83rd and State Streets also felt the fury of the violent storm. But damage here was not as extensive as it was in Oak Lawn and there were no deaths or injuries. Mayor Daly, accompanied by Fire Commissioner Robert Quinn, toured the area, then offered the city's help to Oak Lawn and other communities in need. Tornadoes also did considerable damage in northwest suburban Barrington. A dozen homes were badly damaged, six others were leveled. In the Flint Creek area, trees down by the tornadoes slowed search and rescue operations. Crews had to cut their way into homes that were battered by the tornadic winds. In Lake Zurich, about 200 homes were destroyed or badly damaged. The wrath of the fierce storm centered on Miller and Rugby Roads in an area called the Manor. Because there were no deaths and injuries were slight in number and severity, residents were calling it the miracle of the Manor. But it wasn't until dawn that the real impact of the tornadoes could be assessed. From the air, the stricken communities resembled battle zones. For the residents of this suburban community and others, Barrington, Evergreen Park, Belvedere, and Oak Lawn, it was time to pick up the pieces. This was the challenge hurled at northeastern Illinois by the worst barrage of tornadoes this area has witnessed. Weary rescue crews and volunteers continued to push themselves after working through the night. Channel 9 cameramen, most of them working with little or no sleep, continued to tell the story on film. From above, the job of cleaning up and rebuilding Oak Lawn appeared to be overwhelming. But while it would be several months before the shattered homes could be erected again, village president Fred Dumkey offered this assessment of the situation. We expect to have the community completely cleaned up by Tuesday. Late Tuesday afternoon, 
uh, and in this process of demolishing buildings, the fire department moves in first to check for any bodies. The building departments move in to determine whether they should be removed or whether they can be salvaged. Right, if they have to tear them down, right behind them comes wrecking crews, professional wrecking crews, who demolish the building and the uh, debris is immediately hauled away by trucks and front end loaders and moved out. This is our program, this is the way it's working very efficiently. As the rubble was cleared away, more victims were found. The death toll in Oak Lawn climbed to 32, and reports from hospitals placed the number of injured at more than 500. Governor Kerner, who toured the tornado-ravaged areas, called it the most massive destruction I have ever seen. The governor said the loss in lives could have been even greater had it not been for our weather warning system. Uh, when we get a report, we can have it out on the wire to everyone, the public, within 10 minutes. And, of course, the, as the weather conditions develop, uh, we so indicate. But I spoke to one of the ladies out at Belvedere, uh, whose home was destroyed, she said, yes, she heard it, but uh, she hears it so frequently she paid no attention to it, and she was fortunate she got away with a life. Edward Fisher, owner of a motel at 95th and Southwest Highway, was aware of the coming storm, but could only stand by helplessly as the tornado tore into his building. Did you have any warning at all? No, just it, the wind came up and things started flying, that's all. I, I had heard it on, on the TV, in fact, on, on WGN. And uh, that there was warnings, but it comes so fast, you don't have a chance to, to go where you want to go. But that door happened to be open, and I went in there and put my head to the wall, and everything collapsed around me. There was seven business properties right on the corner here, and they're all demolished. There's nothing left yeah. over in there. Or... There's nothing left of all of these buildings that were here. And there were seven buildings in all, and they're all demolished in 30 seconds. Well, now, what, what remains now? I don't know. I have to find out how the bank took care of it. I don't know. Are you insured? I don't know. For those who didn't have insurance, there would be low interest loans from the Small Business Administration. And the tornado stricken areas would receive additional aid from the federal government as damage exceeded the $50 million mark. Scenes like these will not be forgotten soon, if ever, by residents of Oak Lawn and the other devastated communities as they try to salvage a new life from the ruins left by funnels of destruction. That's the Channel 9 news story in capsule form. It should be quite evident why I'm proud to be part of this fine organization. I hope you will continue to be a part of our Channel 9 viewing audience. Now on behalf of Channel 9 News, and the entire WGN family, thank you for watching. I'm John Burry.